Our need to record ourselves goes back to even Neolithic age cave paintings, and since then has come a very, very long way. And editing is the thing that makes all films visually appealing and has solved a lot of problems with films throughout the ages. But before we get into editing, let's start with motion picture and where it all began. The earliest known motion picture is this, the round hair garden scene. This short 2.11 second long piece of footage is the earliest known footage of its kind in existence. Made in 1888 by Louis Le Prince, it is the first celluloid film ever made. Auguste and Louis Lumiere were famous for their arrival of a train at La Ciotat, which was shown to an audience. The footage was a whole new experience for the people, as they had never seen anything like it before. Some people even fled in panic in fear of being hit by the train that was on the screen in front of them. The brothers are renowned as the earliest filmmakers in history. The Silent Era. An era film which didn't have any editing or configuration at all. It was clips that were constant and had piano music playing alongside them. From this era emerged the pioneers of the editing, cinematographic and general film industry, Melier being the first to get the ball rolling. George Melier is responsible for developing things like dissolves, multiple exposures, and was even responsible for time-lapse photography. After Melier comes Edwin Porter. Porter improved on Melier's work of using dissolves and cuts in films, and made them tell a story. Porter's skill with editing and methods of projection were used to great effect in some of his earliest films, such as this one, The Great Train Robbery. Then came D.W. Griffith also known as the forefather of editing. Griffith's innovations are still recognised and praised today. Griffith made use of techniques like parallel editing, and more importantly, he developed angles like close shots, medium shots and wide shots, and just general camera angles. Moving into the later days of filmmaking, we get the more technical pioneers like Sergei Eisenstein. Eisenstein is one of the men who first put montage into the light. Montage is an assortment of clips with no initial relationship to each other, but are related in the context of the film, whatever film it may be. This style of filmmaking is used in Eisenstein's films like this one, Battleship Potemkin. Eisenstein developed this theory of montage by looking at the work of D.W. Griffith and another, Lev Kuleshov, the forefathers of the film. Next we had G... G... Sake. Next we had Giga Vervatov. Vervatov is, is most renowned for his film A Man With A Movie Camera, which has been labelled as one of the best films ever made. Vervatov made good use of stock frames and dissolves, taking on board the works of his predecessors like Eisenstein and Porter. We now begin to settle more into the film industry as we know it today, with the invention of sound. The first recorded sound came about through this clip, the Edison Sound Experiment, conducted in 1894. Boy, that escalated quickly. In this next clip is the first film to use sound. It's called Little Titch, and is a French black and white film produced in 1906. Sound was put to great use by directors like Fritz Lang and Alfred Hitchcock, but sound was disapproved by some as they believed that sound was taking cinema back to theater and was considered as a step backwards. That's a damn shame. Yes, Vince. Yes, it is. The next phase of the evolution of editing comes around with the birth of cinema verite. Out of this style of filmmaking came great directors, Jean-Luc Godard being one of them. Godard's films like this one, Breathless, challenged Hollywood's traditional film style, which is why it appealed to so many. He was an influential filmmaker in the French New Wave. Francois Truffaut was another influential figurehead of the cinema verite wave. Truffaut was responsible for 25 outstanding films. Here is some footage from his film The Sink, Silk and Skin, made in 1964, another film benefiting from the already rising popularity of its genre. These editing techniques have contributed to our modern day cinema, which has produced some incredibly inspiring and visually appetizing films. 
to those who have made us laugh or cry, and the amazingly talented directors, editors and producers that have come forward. If only those pioneers could see us now.